Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to another episode of China Update, where I provide you with the most up-to-date political, economic, and geostrategic analysis on the world's number two economy. My name is Tony. Let's jump in. And we begin, as we usually do, with the economy. UK-based Reuters, in an exclusive published today, citing three unnamed sources, writes that, quote, China's top leaders and policymakers are considering allowing the yuan to weaken in 2025 as they brace for higher U.S. trade tariffs, end quote. Some commentators are now asking if a Chinese currency crash is imminent. And by the way, this is what the thumbnail is referring to, a crash in the currency, similar to the nightmare trillion-dollar disaster in 2015. We're not talking about a crash of the entire system. A source privy to the central bank's thinking told Reuters that People's Bank of China is considering the possibility that the yuan could drop to 7.5 per the dollar to counteract any trade shocks. But that's only a 3.5% depreciation from its current levels, and a lot smaller than the devaluation of 10% that we saw in response to Trump's tariffs in the first administration. Japan-based Nomura said this month the currency could drop to 7.6 in offshore trading by May. Some commentators have even predicted an 8 to the US dollar drop. As such, there could be much more space for the yuan to fall in 2025. Indeed, it's already heading there. The offshore yuan dropped as much as 0.5% to 7.29 per dollar just in response to this Reuters report. Pressure on the yuan has intensified since the re-election of Donald Trump, who has threatened to impose tariffs on China. Jane Foley, head of FX Strategy at Robobank in London, speaking to US-based Bloomberg, explains today that some investors have speculated Beijing will abandon its current policy of maintaining a stable currency to compensate for any impact that this could have on its economy. Expressing, quote, there is a compelling logic embedded in these comments. China's economy is already weak, inflation is low, and it will have to position itself for Trump's tariffs. End quote. Devaluing the yuan can carry huge costs, however. A rapid depreciation could lead to aggressive capital outflows, triggering even more currency declines. The downward spiral tends to dent appetite for China's stocks and bonds, risking destabilizing financial markets and hurting growth. Beijing has been burned by this in the past too. In August of 2015, Beijing devalued the yuan in a shocking move to aid growth and reform its foreign exchange market. That quickly backfired with capital outflows surging, prompting the bank to burn through its reserves to stabilize the currency. If mismanaged again in 2025, it risks a similar multi-trillion dollar disaster. Next up, yesterday we discussed what Taiwanese officials called the largest People's Liberation Army drills in decades. Interestingly, since then, US officials have disagreed with this characterization. UK-based Reuters, for example, cited an unnamed US military official who expressed, quote, China's naval deployments in the East China Sea and South China Sea are elevated, but consistent with other large exercises in the past. End quote. It is unclear whether this is simply a difference of opinion and analysis or whether Washington is trying to reduce the tensions by playing down the exercises. Yesterday, a Taiwanese security official speaking to France-based AFP said that China's plans for the massive maritime operation began in October and were aimed at demonstrating that Beijing could choke off Taiwan and also to, quote, draw a red line, end quote, ahead of the next U.S. administration, reportedly expressing, quote, the real objective appears to be asserting control within the first island chain and establishing strategic deterrence ahead of the U.S. presidential transition, end quote. Referring to the chain linking Okinawa, Taiwan, and the Philippines, a senior Taiwan security official told a briefing in Taipei it took China's military nearly 70 days to plan and deploy the currency operations and that they were meant for the incoming Trump government and U.S. allies rather than specifically Lai's visit to the Pacific. Quote, they are trying to draw a red line and exert authority for the new master of the White House, end quote. The same day, yesterday, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin told reporters at a U.S. base in Japan that the United States was monitoring China's, quote, latest activity, end quote, and would ensure, quote, nobody does anything to change the status quo in the Taiwan Strait. End quote. An unnamed security diplomat in the region briefed on the matter told UK-based The Financial Times that the scale and size of the ongoing Chinese operations, including the manpower being dispatched, was, quote, unheard of in recent years, 
End quote. Meanwhile, while we're on Taiwan this week, a spokesperson for the mainland Beijing-based Taiwan Affairs Office of the State Council, Zhu Fenglian, called Taiwanese chip giant TSMC, quote, the Pledge of Allegiance for the DPP authorities to please the United States, end quote, referring to the Democratic Progressive Party, the party of Lai who is currently in power in Taipei. She also said that, quote, it is only a matter of time before TSMC becomes American TSMC. If the DPP authorities continue to sell out Taiwan without limits, the advantages of Taiwan's related industries will inevitably be weakened and the interests of Taiwanese enterprises and people will inevitably be harmed. But Taiwan's value is exhausted. The pawn will become an abandoned pawn. And Taiwanese enterprises and people are becoming increasingly aware of this. End quote. Unsurprisingly, TSMC is increasingly being pulled into the US-China competition. It had previously tried to act as a neutral player and will need to pick a side. Of course, that side will be Taipei and the US, but it will come at a painful financial cost. Next up, Trump invites Xi to the US and TikTok loses in its day in court. But just quickly, if you're getting some value from today's episode of China Update, don't forget to hit the like button. Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee links are also in the description for those who want to help keep the channel financially sustainable. But really, the biggest favor you could do me is just hitting that like button. And if you have not done so already, subscribe. It's just two clicks of the mouse, but it's a huge help for me. Thank you so much, everybody, for the ongoing support. Finally for today, UK-based The Financial Times reports that the US Trade Representative will soon announce a doubling to 50% of the tariff on Chinese solar wafers and polysilicon. The new tariffs, which will take effect on the 1st of January, just weeks before President-elect Donald Trump replaces current President Joe Biden in the White House, marks an effort to shelter the US's fast-growing solar energy sector from cheap Chinese suppliers. Meanwhile, US-based CBS News reports that soon after the US election last month, President-elect Trump invited Xi Jinping to attend his January 20th inauguration. It is not clear whether she accepted the invitation, and of recording this, there has been no comment from the Chinese side in relation to this invitation. Now, on the topic of Trump in China, the president-elect has tapped Jacob Helberg to be the State Department's top economic policy and trade official, selecting a China hawk for an integral role in U.S. efforts to secure supply chains. In a Truth Social post on Tuesday, Trump said Helberg, one of the leaders in the push to ban Chinese-owned social media platform TikTok, will be, quote, a champion of our America first foreign policy, end quote, as Under Secretary of State for Economic Growth, Energy and Environment. He added that Helberg, quote, has the knowledge, expertise and pragmatism to defend America's economic interests abroad, end quote. Now, speaking of TikTok, in recent days, D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals ruled against TikTok in its attempt to overturn the law that will force either its divestiture by ByteDance or an effective shutdown in the U.S. on the 19th of January next year. In its ruling, the court rejected TikTok's First Amendment challenge to the law, expressing, quote, We recognize that this decision has significant implications for TikTok and its users, end quote. Adding, quote, The First Amendment exists to protect free speech in the United States. Here, the government acted solely to protect the freedom from a foreign adversary nation and to limit the adversary's ability to gather data on people in the United States. End quote. With the decision, Attorney General Garland expressed, quote, Today's decision is an important step in blocking the Chinese government from weaponizing TikTok to collect sensitive information about millions of Americans, to covertly manipulate the content delivered to American audiences, and to undermine our national security. End quote. TikTok has filed an emergency motion for an injunction to stop the law from taking effect on January 19th until their appeal is heard by the U.S. Supreme Court. But there is no guarantee the Supreme Court will take the case. Veteran China analyst Bill Bishop observed on the development, quote, If TikTok cannot get an injunction and the Biden administration allows the law to go into effect on January 19th, one day before Trump takes office again, Apple and Google will have to remove the app from app stores and U.S. cloud services will have to stop supporting TikTok. Even if Trump tells the Department of Justice on January 20 to not enforce the law, would the companies revert to supporting TikTok? Is ByteDance in parallel to its court appeals pursuing some sort of divestiture that will be just enough to pass a Trump smell test that TikTok is no longer controlled by a PRC firm? If they are, is it enough time between now and January to close a deal? Will the involved parties try to resuscitate Oracle's Project Texas as a solution, even though it was not good enough for Congress when the law passed? End quote. 
Mike Waltz, the Florida lawmaker and incoming U.S. National Security Advisor, told Fox Business Network recently that Trump, quote, wants to save TikTok, end quote, adding, quote, we absolutely need to allow the American people to have access to that app, but we have to protect our data as well, end quote. However, Marco Rubio, the Florida senator, and China Hawk, who Trump has nominated as a Secretary of State, has supported banning TikTok. We note that Noel uh, Francisco, President Donald Trump's Solicitor General from 2017 through 2020, is now representing TikTok in its case against the US government, a prime example of DC's notorious revolving doors. Now, there is another dimension to all this as well, which we need to cover. UK-based The Financial Times reports this week, citing unnamed sources, that TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, has lured top AI engineers and researchers away from Alibaba and startups such as 01.ai and Jipul in recent months. It has created and expanded teams to work on its large language models and AI products. Quote, ByteDance is plowing billions of dollars into AI infrastructure. In the past two years, it has purchased enough cutting-edge NVIDIA graphics processing units to build advanced AI models. End quote. Thus, if TikTok remains in ByteDance's hands and is not banned in the United States, the billions of dollars made from millions of American users will be used to fuel China's AI race against the US itself. Okay, that is today's episode of China Update. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Have a good Thursday, and I will see you all tomorrow.